this is an interesting moment. This is um, from Piers Morgan, my fellow countryman, interviewing a bunch of people on the subject of Trump's trial and conviction. And the potential hypocrisy exists when Bill Clinton didn't exactly carry himself fantastic while, fantastically, excuse me, while in office. Have a look at this moment. If you've not seen it already, you'll enjoy this. This is squarely Trump's making. This has nothing to do with his base. It has nothing to do with protecting American democracy like happened on January 6th, um, according to them. This has to do with Trump making his bronze, bronzer stained bed. With yeah, bronzer stained. And I'm going to focus on that. It's stained with bronzer. Now, what's delightful about this? I have to say props to the people that made this show. Getting this line up, setting this up, excellent. And Piers' question is quite brilliant here because he points out that Clinton, while in office, engaged in comparable behavior, but sexual conduct that is less than perfect, let's face it. In addition to that, paying off a person who was making a claim. It's pretty extraordinary. It's pretty astonishing. But above all else, what it does is it shows that the emotional fervor and moral fibrility of the Democrat establishment is not founded in morality or principles. It's just weaponized. There are no core principles now. There are no core ethics. This is a wonderful moment of exposure. The porn star trying to cover it up and then getting caught doing it. And out of interest, before I go to Michael, um, out of interest, why is Bill Clinton able to have sex with an intern in the Oval Office when he's president and lie to the American people about it on national television? And why is he able to pay off Paula Jones $850,000, four times as much, five times as much as the Trump payment to Stormy Daniels, um, to get rid of a sexual harassment claim, again, while he's president? And he has no criminal court recourse for that. Why is that deemed to be better than what happened with Trump and Stormy? There's the first pause. Now, that could be a time delay. Sometimes you get that on Zoom calls. But I like to think that there's some moral grappling happening here, that this pundit for the first time is thinking, wait a minute, if what we're actually condemning Trump for is his actions, not simply for the crime of being Donald Trump and the bronzer and all that stuff that I hate, then this does make sense, what Piers Morgan is saying. Because Clinton did do that while in office. And Clinton did pay off someone who was making a claim. Wait, what, what can I say now? And you'll note that the subsequent announcements actually don't make sense anymore. Because there's no sense at the heart of this establishment. Because all it can express now is the corruption that is its essence. I, I don't think anyone is making that case, Piers. I'm no, not here. But <laughs> don't make that case, because if anyone did make that case, that would be a difficult case to argue with because it's watertight. Asking you, what's the difference? Or any, what's the difference? Or any predator. Michael Knowles, he's loving this. He just, <laughs> it looks like so happy. That'd be, he should use that for, for a thumbnail. That could be Michael Knowles' Christmas card right there. Like, she's falling apart because of this. I believe in compassion. I believe in love. I believe in justice. I believe in law and order. I believe in salvation and I believe in redemption. And sometimes those values have a personal cost. You can't just use those things to bring down people you disagree with because eventually it will be reflected at you. The difference is, is that he didn't cook the books financially. You yeah, cooking the books. A book should never be cooked, even though it rhymes. Don't do it. Do not put a book in a pan or a skillet or a barbecue or even an air fryer. That's the element of this book cookery. Using his own, like using back channels in order to pay back channels. That they, where, where were the back channels with uh, the, the Paula Jones? So paying that somebody off who off. says you saw sexually harassed her, paying nearly a million dollars while you're the president of the United States and then having sex with an intern in the Oval Office and lying about it. That's fine because he's a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> Piers, only, only the leftists in your mind are making that argument. Sorry? Some people are going to have to start making that argument because it seems like a pretty significant one as the establishment falls apart before our very eyes, simply because we live in real time now and can communicate in real time. Whether it is the pandemic and what was said at the beginning of the pandemic and what occurred during it, a wealth transfer, massive overregulation, centralized authority, 
punishment of ordinary people across the world. How many people do you know whose businesses went under? Or whether it's the war that we're not supposed to be having that looks now at a glance pretty similar to some of the other proxy wars in recent history. I'm talking about the last half century. Wars where we're told, oh, we're just supplying, we're just helping, it's a humanitarian crisis. It seems like it's a marketing campaign for Raytheon is what it is. And now with the deployment of the policies of other, and in this case, literal political opponents, criminalizing them while plagiarizing them. How can that be ethical? How can it be moral? How can it be right? I would like to send a message of love to our sponsors at Charlie's. Charlie's make this incredible product. Now, have you noticed that I'm looking incredibly young? It's not just the tiny hat, it's my skin. And my skin is looking good because of this range of extraordinary products. Now, I don't know if these products are gonna be for you, but they might be for someone you love and they make a perfect gift and there's 20% off this pack for the next, I think we can do it for 48 hours. Is it 48 hours? Can we do it for 48 hours? If you use the code brand. Now there's a number of significant details about these extraordinary products. First, they're absolutely toxin free. Unlike a lot of cosmetics, you know, like you use things to make you look younger. It sinks poison, venom into your face, like some sort of oily little cobra, like some sort of Justin Trudeau moisturizer. Looks good actually toxic. One of the components of this product that makes it extraordinary is Citrus Paradisi Peel Oil. This is a beautiful organic ingredient and the very kind of thing that you'd expect from Charlene, the founder of this company, who is on Joe Biden's hate list because of the stance she took during COVID. Remember, you can use our code to get a discount on these products. These products can do um, all manner of things, elevate your skincare routine using the unmatched power of nature. Toxin free, baby. So say yes to natural goodness and show your skin its true potential. I will say they tend to look better if you use them in conjunction with a tiny, tiny little mouse's hat. So take a stand, demand transparency, let beauty shine from the inside out. Visit charlies.beauty forward slash brand and use the code brand for 20% off. Discover a new era of personal care, one that's truly toxic free. Stay radiant, stay conscious, stay beautiful. There will be someone in your life that will love you for this glorious little concoction. I'm calling it a basket of wonder. There's a shower gel in there. There's a restoring anti-aging serum. There's all sorts of stuff in there. I'm recommending it. I'm endorsing it to you. And Charlene, the founder of the company, she's a good, strong, damn fine American woman. Here's Charlemagne the God commenting on Biden's hemorrhaging of support among various different ethnicities and various different you know, hues of voters. Why do you think he's falling short among black voters? I think that, you know, it's not even just black voters. As you see, it's Latino voters, it's youth voters. I think um, my man Tim Ryan coined the perfect phrase when he said that, you know, uh, most people in America are part of the exhausted majority. The, the exhausted majority. I wonder if that's a fair assessment. There's a good post from our friend Jimmy Dore. The establishment is so stupid and afraid. They think doing a political prosecution of their number one foe, opponent, I guess he means there, or foe, I'm not going to get into Jimmy Dore's typos, man, is going to turn people against him, unless that's a slang that I don't even know. He will have the exact opposite effect. Trump is now a martyr and people will vote for him who previously wouldn't have. People like African-Americans and Mexicans who also feel they got a raw deal from the legal system. I know this is the result because I saw those people say that when they were interviewed at a Trump rally in the Bronx. The people who are prosecuting Donald Trump hate him, but what they really hate is democracy and the rule of law even more. The rise of lawfare, the rise of hypocrisy and corruption. Let's have a look at that rally now and MSNBC reporting on it in a state of confusion and bafflement as people simply refuse to do what they're supposed to do according to the messaging of the legacy media. It's too much crime, it's, everything is going downhill. The economy is going bad, the food is expensive. It's like affordable housing is too, for not for everybody, it's just horrible. I want food to go cheaper, the gas, I want gas cheaper. When I came and he was the president, the gas was a lot cheaper than it is right now. Now we're becoming the Bronx second class citizens. We have this influx of migrants that are coming in and they're getting everything. And everyone in the Bronx, in the city of New York, is, is forgotten. Yes, it's pretty extraordinary to see that because people aren't saying what they're supposed to say. People don't appear to be being led by the cultural arguments that are being offered by the ongoing condemnation of Donald Trump. What appears to matter to them are things that are relevant in your own life. 
If a government can't offer you spiritual ideals, and plainly they can't because they don't have any ideals or ethics or morals, then you simply want them to deal with practical and pragmatic matters, don't you? You just simply want to ensure that you can afford stuff and afford to live. And it seems that this administration and our government, in fact, in the UK, and indeed all of the various nodes of the net of corporate globalism are incapable of delivering a standard of life, a standard of living, a standard of resource that is satisfactory. And that alongside with the sort of dark condemnation of ordinary people that seems to accompany this increasing and incremental control, this move towards technological feudalism that seems to be their true agenda. And now they're unable to divide us as easily as they once were because the people that they were claiming to protect. Why don't we claim we're doing this on behalf of, I don't know, black people or Hispanic people? They're not buying it either. Because whatever it is that drives the establishment, it ain't compassion and it ain't kindness. It wasn't compassion and kindness and a regard for the sanctity of life when they wanted us locked in our homes and they wanted us to take experimental medications. And it's not compassion and kindness when they allow asylum seekers into the nation. Arguments might be made about protecting the people of the world that are suffering elsewhere as a result of the marauding piracy tyranny of the baronial class that currently stand astride the globe. But it surely shouldn't most negatively impact ordinary people in America and in Europe. Solutions must be found that don't persecute and penalize ordinary people that didn't create that problem in the first place. Let's see how MSNBC grapple with some truths they've inadvertently been confronted with while taking the incredible risk of talking to ah ordinary people. And Jose, a lot of the people I talked to were first time voters. Some had never been to a Trump event before. Some had voted for Obama twice and voted for Biden and are now uh, saying they are going to vote for former President Trump in November. Look, a lot is going to happen over the next six months. But this is something I've been hearing uh, consistently from voters. And that's why you're seeing some of the more aggressive push from the Biden campaign to try to uh, shore up their, their base, to try to rally those voters. As Benny Johnson points out, a pretty clear indication of of Trump's rise in popularity among new demographics is his extraordinary rise in popularity since recently joining TikTok. TikTok, which is in the process of being banned, you understand. Why? Because it's another conduit through which true information, as well as ridiculous dancing and other extraordinary cultural ephemera that could destroy an Amazon tribe in half an hour, it can also be used to tell the truth. That's why Rumble's interested in acquiring that platform, I understand. As if that that would be allowed to happen in this crazy and corrupt system. But let's have a look at Donald Trump's rise as opposed to the stagnation of Biden's account. Uh, this was made by the uh, uh, pundit, poster and content creator, Benny Johnson. It's pretty good, this, I think. Uh, so there's his post on the subject. This is it in real time. Have a look here at Trump's account on TikTok versus Biden's. It's a, it's a pretty sorry state of affairs. Oh, dear. Oh, no. So I suppose like well, what we're witnessing now is a demographic shift. And I can feel that from being in America, this time where I'm in residence in Rumble, I can feel that new people are being attracted to Trump because maybe because they enjoy the charisma, they enjoy the energy. But my sense is because they recognize that above all else, you cannot trust the establishment. Above all else, you can't rely on a single word that Joe Biden, in the rare occasions where he's able to formulate a, a sentence, you can be assured of this. It's either hypocrisy or corruption or manipulation. They don't believe in communication. They believe in manipulation, as Michael Malice said. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.